Hi, welcome to PH Dizzle. I'm your host, Alice Chang, and today we'll be interviewing Dr. Xiao Kun Wang, who got her BS in chemistry from Peking University in China, her PhD in biomedical engineering from a joint program between Georgia Tech Emory and Peking University, and is currently CTO at a stealth startup. It's great to be able to speak with you again. We actually went to the same program and that's how we know each other, but I want to start back at the beginning. So you actually first, um, you know, you did your PhD in biomedical engineering, but you actually started out in chemistry. So tell me a little bit about your interest in chemistry and how that transitioned into biomedical engineering. Sure. Oh, well, how I find that I'm interested in chemistry is very, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that goes way back in high school. Like I, like, I think I did pretty well in chemistry back in high school. And sometimes that encouraged you to, mm -hmm. you know, to write down, okay, I want to study chemistry. The, like without realizing how complicated it is <laughs> getting come into college. Uh, but I'm lucky enough to get accepted at uh, Peking University and I studied chemistry for my bachelor degree. Um, I switched to biomedical engineering because I, uh, when I did my bachelor thesis, I uh, got a like new professor uh, at the uh, Department of Engineering at Peking University, and he was affiliated with the biomedical department, and he actually majored his chemistry. Uh, in his bachelor or PhD uh, degree. So we started with this fundamental chemistry. So I work with uh, material uh, synthesis, synthesis this uh, dental resin. Mm -hmm. uh, but, so that re really requires very uh, like basic uh, chemistry lab settings and basic chemistry trainings. However, applications is on the medical or more uh, like a practical side. Then I, uh, when I did my PhD, I stay with this uh, PI, like Dr. Chen, Hafen Chen, you know him. I know him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I'm sl slowly migrate uh, to biomedical engineering. Yeah. Okay. And so you stayed with the same PI. So I think that probably helped with the transition into yeah. PhD. Yeah. How did you find out about this? Like this program is with three different schools. It was really new at the time. how did you find out about that program and then decide to do it? Uh, I think that program started to uh, merge while I was second year at my PhD. Oh, wow. And yeah, I think so. I think so you actually when, started off at just Peking University with your PhD? I Yes, yes. Okay. I started off with just, uh, uh, excuse me, just that uh, at Peking University. And I think that program uh, was founded in 2009. If, I'm right. So yeah, I, I got in graduate school in 2007 <clears throat> and like I was there like uh, to see uh, all the uh, progress when, when they started uh, this program and oh, I got very interested. I was like, yeah, this is a really good opportunity. Uh, we can get overseas and uh, go to Georgia Tech to really like to me at that time, like the joint PhD degree is less important than a the experience, you know? Yeah. So I was like, yeah, that part was um, was very important to me. So um, I decided to apply and I went through all the enrollment. Like we did uh, the we did the language test and the GRE when I was oh, wow. like second, yeah, the, the second year of my PhD. So wow. yeah, went through oh. all this, but I'm lucky enough to get enrolled and uh, started off as the first one who graduated from that. Program. Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't realize that, or maybe I forgot. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, well, okay, so tell me what you did. So you basically found a collaborator in the States that was, I think maybe you were already collaborating with, and you talked about doing some dental resin work. I think you also yeah. did some like electro spinning and tissue engineering work. So, yes. Tell me about, you know, what, like the projects that you worked on and how that transitioned during your graduate school career. Sure. Uh, the dental resin work was my uh, bachelor degree thesis. 
So when I started my graduate school, I think Dr. Chen was expanding his research interest to, to tissue engineering. So I started, uh, I was his first graduate student. So I was <laughs> like taking, <laughs> trying to explore that, uh, the, the, the tissue engineering part. So we start, uh, then I like learned a lot of those biomaterials, like uh, stuff of fabrications. And uh, then we paid lecture spinning as this, um, uh, like scaffold fabrication methods. Uh, at that time, I think I was in touch with Dr. Boyan uh, when I was still at Peking University. I started to send uh, Dr. Boyan some, some materials we uh, fabricated for them to evaluate the, the cell response uh, to it. And when I, uh, when I got enrolled in this program and went over to Georgia Tech, and I get to like really do the cell work on myself and on top of my the, the materials I brought with me <laughs> overseas and uh, yeah to finish my PhD degree. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then you so you decide you came to the U.S. You were here for maybe were you here for like a year or over a year? A year and a half, a little bit. Yeah. A okay. Year. And then so you finished your PhD, but then you decided to stay in the U.S. So, and you also decided yeah. to stay in academia. So tell me about that decision. Sure. I finished the study at Georgia Tech in, at the end of uh, 20, 2012. Yes. Uh, then I went back to China to, uh, to, to, to finish all this paperwork and graduated officially from, uh, from this joint program in 2013. Then I uh, started to think I really like the research environment in the US. So I started to apply for a uh, postdoc uh, position in the US. So I was lucky enough to get a, uh, an offer from jo Johns Hopkins University, which is very exciting place. I spent seven yeah. years over there and I enjoyed the research over there. Um, and I switched to a, a, a from a bone research to cornea research, wow. but like still very focused on the biomaterials. Biomaterials essentially um, the, the, the core, the focus of my PhD thesis um, and also the focus of my postdoc research. Okay. Um, I, I think at that time I, I do enjoy research uh, progress as is. And uh, um, I, I like the university life and the university environment. So I decided to stay in academia for a certain period of time. <laughs> then a COVID hits. That's another story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, tell me about yeah. that. COVID hit. Did you continue working in the lab or were you able to work from home? I, well, like I, I work at Johns Hopkins University from 2013 to 2020. Wow. So it's like a, a good seven years and we did a lot of research to switch to from cornea research to some immune, immunology, immunomodulation, and uh, it, it was all fun. Then uh, there are two things happened, the COVID hit and I had a baby. So oh. <laughs> that was, yeah, that had, um, uh, I had my daughter in 2019 uh, in September. And when she reached the six months old, everything like the, the COVID started yeah. and everything shut down. And I was basically by myself over there oh. like with the baby. So I decided, oh my God, maybe this is not the time. I and you were by yourself because your yeah. husband was like in a different job. So you guys were doing- Yes, that. yes. We've been long distance ever since. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think that was the time it was like, it was a hard decision. Um, yeah. I, I, I have probably have to quit and focus on my family for yes. a, a certain amount of time, at least when I feel safe to uh, send my baby to, to daycare. But at that time, I think yes. it's really, I, I was really concerned. Um, so yeah, I had to end my uh, seven years research at South Hopkins, but I still, uh, it, it was a good experience. I like, actually build up the foundation, of, uh, like my knowledge foundation of my uh, current job. So yeah. That's great. And I'm glad you're yeah. sharing, you're open about sharing your story. I think there's a lot of women in the workforce and especially when COVID happened, yeah. I think it hit women the hardest, Not the hardest, but of like men versus women, a exactly. lot of women had to be caretakers. Exactly. And so yeah. um, in terms of like affecting their career, it was probably really difficult. And um, it's hard to say that you ended your job 
because you had to take care of somebody, but, but it's the reality of things. Right. And yeah, but it's still yeah. happening. And so people are probably still out there, you know, trying to make it work. Daycares are closing every right. two weeks, you know, you like if someone gets sick every two weeks, you have to be there to take care of the kid. If, if they're yeah. not normal. This is really something I have to do. I do. I don't regret. I did it. Yeah. You don't regret. I, you did it. I don't regret. Okay. I did it. <laughs> yes, definitely. But at that time, I love it too. Um, family is something it's more important <laughs> yeah for sure okay yeah. well I'm glad you made that decision it's definitely the right decision but yeah. it sounds like you're back in the workforce now um yes. you found an amazing startup company with an amazing title um so tell me a little bit about that and your transition back you know with you know it's still COVID but you know like after kind yeah. of this period of time sure um absolutely I think i uh, last winter when everything started to ease out <laughs> like, um, I think it was like uh, it, it really it's the time for me to start to get back to work because uh, I feel like the longer you leave your career the harder you get like yes you, you, the harder it will make you to get back uh, so I start to search of of course within the two hour driving radiance of our, <laughs> of our home. And uh, then I find this place, uh, a startup uh, company like uh, aiming to develop a sustainable leather alternative using mm. biomaterials. Wow. And I was like, wow, that fits me a while. Because <laughs> <laughs> back in Hopkins, um, I was doing like a cordia uh, reconstruction. So we use collagen as our main ingredient. So it knows a lot of collagen and everything. And um, when, you th when you think about leather, it's essentially collagen in it. And if you want to make leather, I think I have the right background knowledge of that. So I applied. Mm. So I just, it's a really random opportunity I found on LinkedIn. Mm, <laughs> awesome. it, it is a principal scientist uh, uh, a title uh, at that time. So I applied for that per, uh, position. Everything went well. We had a nice conversation, technical conversation with our CSO and uh, like nice business conversation with our CEO. Then uh, it, it's then I decided to join. So it's uh, it's in upstate New York. So it's about two hours drive of oh, our wow. uh, current yeah uh, our home. So it's manageable. But like my husband and I was dealing with this long distance thing for a yeah. while. This is actually the closest distance we've oh, ever uh, ever so since. You drive. You're driving two hours there and back right now. Not really. We, uh, we like I decided to get an apartment over here okay. um, and uh, find it a small, fairly safe family based daycare for uh, for my daughter. That's good. Uh, so everything went well. I started, uh, I think, in March this year, 2021. Uh, like, uh, just a uh, I think I, I was supervising the R&D team and trying to figure out the product lines. And um, I, I, I really like this current work environment and the current project. So I, I think it really fits my work ethics really mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. It's nice. We can, uh, I, I, like, it's nice, like, we can find a job, use your background knowledge, use your technologies has been built over years. Um, and work on something you are actually passionate about. So I'm really happy about the uh, the position and the work I'm doing, and they worked out pretty well. So after six months, I joined the company, and our CEO was like, "Hmm, we were we, we thought we were going to spend a lot of time searching for our CTO." However, I didn't realize it right sitting right there. So I was really, Aww. I was really like pleasantly su surprised and really honored and accepted the new position. And that also means <laughs> more responsibility and more work. But yeah, I'm, I think I'm, uh, I, I'm ready to take this challenge. Yeah. That's amazing. And I mean, it's so different from if you just look back, I guess, 18 months ago when you were like not yeah. working in the middle of the pandemic and you're like, what am I going to find? And now you're like CTO of this exactly. company. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I think the entire 2021, hap there's a lot happened to me. Like I, I look back even like a month ago, 
I was like, oh my god, there's so much has happened in the in October only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it sounds like things are going really well. So um, I want to talk a little bit about the like industry versus academia because you were in sure. academia for so long, and it seemed like you kind of you know you enjoyed it at Johns Hopkins too. So when you transitioned into industry, I know it's still like a scientific role or a technical mm -hmm. role. Um, it seems like you really like this as well. So maybe tell me like pros and cons and, and how you're thinking about, you know, moving forward in your career. Do you want to stay in industry? Yeah, sure. Um, I think academia, um, the science is exciting. So like uh, the, the, the labs I work with, what well, I work in at Johns Hopkins, um, our PI likes to do cutting edge science, which is very exciting. However, also very challenging too. Yes. And we have to uh, really follow the trend uh, of the entire academia uh, and always shoot to try to, to run in the front. Um, uh, industry, on the other hand, I think it, we have to be more practical. Of course, we are trying to develop a product um, we have to balance the different properties. Sometimes we have to sacrifice certain properties and try to make over uh, to make up with the sh you know the short board and to, to make a balance the product. Um, I think I I uh, like I like to think practically, so this uh, I can balance it really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Okay, so one of the things you mentioned, I think this is a good transition into um, your hobbies, because one of the things that you mentioned that was really nice about this job that you have now is that it marries kind of your background and expertise with one of your passions. You're making leather. How is, tell me what, what <laughs> how does that fit in your world? And, you know, we don't know much about your background and personality. We've only talked about the technical side so far. So tell me a little bit about, you know, how, how this fits into your world. Sure, sure. I think before I had my daughter, I love shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like shopping? I don't know. <laughs> I, I love shopping. I can, I have like a hundreds pair of shoes, some handbags, <laughs> but it's a really big headache when I when you, you have to move around. Yes, you know? it's true. <laughs> but then you then you have baby and your shopping interest interest shifted on the kids. Yes. Um, however, I think this job makes me think more uh, more about the sustainability. So yeah. then I, I think that it kind of shifts my shopping pattern sometimes when I do it. It's like, hmm, do I really need it? Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the, uh, one of the points that really uh, uh, appealed me to accept this position is like when our CEO was talking about like, oh, we are producing a more sustainable and ideal and maybe more of like a better um, animal free material for the fashion industry because she mentioned the fashion industry also under a lot of pressure trying to seek out uh, seek out more sustainable materials and to solve the animal cruelty problems and that really um yeah that fits my passion well so yeah <laughs> i can't say i do shopping for fun but like it, <laughs> it's well but if you it's something i really enjoy <laughs> well you're interested in fashion right and i think that's that's yeah. important um okay what, what else um do you do in your spare time i mean you have a baby and you're kind of yeah i know <laughs> so i don't know do you have spare time what are you interested in my after work life is kind of boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, my daughter is two year old, years old. So she's at that stage of has a lot of passion, has a lot of energy to burn. So usually my after work life is basically focused on her to yeah. like maybe take her to a playground and uh, uh, just uh, to keep her entertained. That, that's yeah, that, that, that also costs a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, right now, I really don't do much except for maybe watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah. That's another option. That's yeah. been big during COVID because it's like nobody can leave the house. So you just I like, know, watch I know. <laughs> yeah. And if I remember correctly, do you still have a cat? Yes, I have two. <laughs> I have two cats. I have one cat, uh, one is Noggin, you know him. Uh, I got him uh, I, in, like when I was in Georgia Tech. So I think he is with me for 10 years now. Wow. 10 years now, yeah. 
That's a long time. Uh, That's like his yeah. whole life. Yeah. Yeah. T- 2011, now games with me uh, since then. And I got another cat. Um, she is a, uh, like, I, I adopted her. And uh, she has only one eye, <laughs> but she is a happy cat. <laughs> She's a happy cat now. Like I think she, right now she is three years, three years old. She gets stronger, you, <laughs> and started to be knocking up. So uh, I have to break them up. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Are, are um, the cats good with your daughter? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they're child friendly, baby friendly. <laughs> yes, baby friendly. PH Dizzle. Having fun with smart people who do cool things. <laughs> <laughs>